I like what Matthew, and I want to jump back. It's Easter. I said last week, sometimes it's kind of hard when you're between Palm Sunday and you're between Easter because Palm Sunday, you know, I want to educate people on what Palm Sunday is about. And then you get to Easter and you're celebrating the resurrection. Uh, so, Brother Eli, I feel like tonight I'm bouncing back and getting that in between place. Where we're going to look at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And uh, the Bible says in Matthew 27, or uh, chapter 27, verse 27, And when the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall, and they gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him. They took the garments that he had, his outer garments. There was an undergarment that was probably left there, but stripped him of that outer garment. And the Word of God says, and put on him a scarlet robe. Now, a lot of folks believe that because of tradition, and, and most people would agree that. They probably, Brother Craig, took an old robe from one of the governors, one of the leaders there uh, within the Roman Empire that was wore out, was no good anymore, and they put on Jesus, and uh, they were uh, uh, making fun of him. You know, a garment that would be cast and thrown away, but they take it and they put it on the man who claims to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the Bible says, and when they had platted a crown, they take that crown and they plaited it. Most would agree that upon it were thorns that were around six inches long. Now I know that we think about thorns and maybe you think about a rose bush, but think about the thorns upon this crown, six inches long. And they, they plaited it together and there they took that old worn out robe and they placed it upon Jesus in mockery and in shame. And they put it upon Him. Then they put that victor's crown upon His head and they pushed it down into His brow. Can you imagine what that's like? I don't know. I, I have a holly bush that I to go around in my yard. Sometimes Brother Craig, if that catches me, man, I know all about that. That's just a little, uh, a Brother John, a little point that, that I feel. But could you imagine Jesus Christ as He's mocked and He's been beaten and made fun of and they plait this crown of thorns and they place it upon His brow and they press it down because they're being mean. They're being angry. They're being resentful. Uh, they're making a mockery out of Him. And, uh, they're, they're fueling the fire of one another as, as they do their very best to be worse to Him. They did not know that putting that crown of thorns upon His head it was a crown of thorns. And that word crown there itself means a victor's crown. And, and they wanted to show that he was no victor, but he was a victim of the system. But what they did not know is three days later, he would show himself as the victor. Amen. You put the crown of thorns upon his head. You mock him. You revile him. You do all manner of things against him. But three days later, he will show that he is victorious. Amen. Over death, over hell, over the grave. He conquered. He wins. Amen. The Bible says that they put a reed in his hand and, and they bowed before him and they mocked him and, and they said, Hail him, king of the Jews. And then they spit upon him. Can you imagine? That is the lowest of a low to be spit upon. But he took it. Because there was a plan in mind. And you and I were that plan. They took that reed and they hit him over the head. Imagine with me tonight, if you will. The crown of thorns, blood running down his brow, down his face. And then they take that reed and they hit it. And they cause that crown of thorns to penetrate deeper into his flesh and into his skull. The Bible says that after they mocked him, they took the robe off of him and they put on him his own raiment. Raymond, they led him away 
to crucify him. He is being led this week is known as the Passion Week or the week of sufferings, the week of sorrow for Jesus. They lead him down the Via Della Rosa, the path of sorrows, as he makes his way down. And the Bible says that, uh, uh, and they came out and they found a man, Simon, uh, by name. And in him they compelled to bear his cross. Probably only a beam, but that beam weighing 100 pounds. And imagine Jesus, this 33 and a half year old man, who should be able to carry the weight of that. But because of the treatment that he has been given, amen, because of the weight of sin, he's no longer able to carry the weight of that cross. Amen. Thank God that he still calls and compels us to carry our crosses. The Bible says, and when they were coming to the place that is called Golgotha, that is to say, the place of the skull. Amen. Tradition says that Adam was buried there. Amen. There was Adam's skull. There Adam died in sin, but Jesus would die to become the victor over sin. Amen. Adam, there's someone who's come to redeem you. There's a second Adam who's coming to give his life that you may have life. The Bible says that they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. When he tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, and it might be fulfilled that which was spoken uh, 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 by the prophet, that they parted my garments. Upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. And they set up over his head his accusation written. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. He died because he claimed to be king. Brother Craig, what they did not know, he was not only King of the Jews, but Brother Josh, he is King of Kings, and he is Lord of Lords. That was his accusation, but that was the truth. And the Bible says that there were two thieves uh, uh, crucified with him, the one on the right and the other on the left. And they who passed by re reviled him, wagging their heads. And they said, uh, you who will destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself if you be the Son of God. Come down from the cross. <clears throat> you see, Jesus wasn't looking to save himself. He was looking to save you and God. Amen. So I feel like I want to say that again. Jesus wasn't looking to save himself. He was looking to save you and God. All your ancestors and every generation that will be, Jesus was looking to save them. I preached here this morning, the sixth hour, it turns dark. Darkness across the land. We know the events that unfold as Jesus begins to speak those final words from the cross. And they see him as he cries out. He was not dying because of weakness. Do you hear me? He didn't die because of weakness. The Word of God was specific. That He cries out with a loud voice. The last thing, Father, into Your hands I commend my spirit. Amen. It's finished. It's done. Everything You called me to do, Heavenly Father, I've done. I've been faithful to the call. I wrestled in the garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. I surrendered my will to You. I committed that I would go all the way to the cross. And so it's not the nails. It's not the beating. It's not the cross. It's not the crown of thorns. It's not the lack of drink that's killing me. Amen. But it is my choice to now surrender my spirit spirit unto you God amen I give it to you because I have completed I have finished the task that you've called me to do I want you to know that Jesus went all the way for you and die he did it he did it all for us he didn't stop halfway he didn't fall back to plan B amen he didn't ask God to give another way 
but he did what the Father wanted him to do with you and I in life. One songwriter wrote, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I don't know, Sister God. He's God on the cross, but he see down through the portals of time, but it us men and women who would accept the blood of Jesus Christ and have an eternity in heaven with him. Did he see your face? Did he see my face? Did he see the faces of the saints in days gone by? Did he see them? Does he already see faces if he should tarry of those, Sister Rachel, who will still come into the faith of the blood of Jesus Christ? And he said, I will do it for them. This morning I said the tradition, as we did this cross, tradition said that uh, after the death of Jesus Christ, that his, his, his cross turned into uh, flowers. Do I believe that? Probably not legend, tradition. But one thing I do believe, that in that cross where there was death, there then became life, and life mm -hmm. more abundantly Amen. for you and I. Thank God for the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as they took him, his body that was broken by the stripes that was placed upon his back, you and I are healed. Do you believe that God purchased our healing? Amen. Amen. Do you believe God can heal cancer tonight? Amen. Amen. Do you believe that God can heal heart disease tonight? Amen. Do you believe that God can do that which is impossible tonight? He is the healer. Amen. Our healing was purchased. By his stripes, we are healed. This morning we looked at. They laid him in that borrowed tomb that was a garden. I wonder, Brother Josh, how beautiful that was a garden, a new tomb. Someone had kept that and made it beautiful because someday they would be buried there or their family would be buried there. Joseph of Arimathea had money. It wasn't an issue. So everything, Sister Beth, probably looked beautiful all around about. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. I believe it was beautiful in that way, Brother Dennis, because Mary thought that he was the gardener taking care of everything because it looked so immaculate and beautiful. And so there it was in that tomb where never a man was laid there's no way of getting Jesus mixed up with anybody else because no one's ever been buried there before Brother Craig. And they take him and they bury him in that grave. The Roman government puts a seal around about that huge stone that is rolled there. And the signet ring in there, the seal cannot be broken because government has said no one beyond this barrier. They put soldiers there and they rotate these soldiers every so many hours that there is a watch constantly being kept. But I want you to know that there in that beautiful garden, the rose of Sharon began to bloom. Amen. The blossom so bright, bright. The blossom so beautiful. The fragrance so sweet. Amen. That God's own son. Amen. He arose from the grave. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost came and rolled back that stone, amen, took his grave clothes, folded them up neatly, amen, came into his body, gave him resurrection life, and so here it was that when Mary came very early in the morning to seek it and to give her respect and to process all those thoughts, you know how it is, there's some folks that say, I I've been going to the graveyard, amen, I th that's all part of processing our emotions and who we are our thinking is as folks go to the graveyard and they pay their respects. And so she was processing all this to Rachel. When she came, the stone was rolled back. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Took Mary a little bit. Amen. She went and got the other disciples. <clears throat> she carried, she waited. The gardener. But when he spoke her name, Brother Dennis sang it this morning. And because he knows, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, 
all fear is gone. Because I know. I know. Anything that you know tonight, deep in your heart, he lives. And because he lives, I want us tonight, symbolic of Jesus Christ, symbolic of that day that you and I will partake of the juice and the bread. Amen. I want us together. But just if you could just put on low that CD that should be ready to roll. Um, I think it's three. And if you could get the lights in the back. I want to invite us to come around the table. I just want it to be a very special, a very sacred time for us. Let's